Because Come on, that's manifest. what I'm talking it's about. Come on, manifest it. It's already up. Do it. Come on. Come on. Manifest it. This year started is going to be our new dynasty year. It's going to be the year <laughs> where we start everything. Oh Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P, your new favorite hoop show, presented to you by Wave Sports and Entertainment. I got my guys with me, of course. Let Dallas go. Rutherford, oh, talk oh, to hey. him. Come on, hey. Moni. I'm ready for the show. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Come on. And we got JJ Coleman. Come. Do y'all homework <laughs> from Hurricane Season. Hey. I just ain't got my grill for real. Uh, hey, ah. Jackie Lowe. Come on, and do <laughs> episode five, y'all. We all the way here. We over here just trying to do the best and keeping a thrill. Y'all already know. Watch the uh, church. <laughs> All right, guys, this is a weekly show dropping every Monday for the rest of the NBA season. We'll usually record these three to four days before they release. Uh, but make sure you go subscribe to us on YouTube and make sure you turn on those post notifications so that you don't miss any of our shows. And also go follow us on social media at Podcast P Show. Jackie, what do we have coming up for episode five? Woo! It's getting hot in here this uh -huh. week on EP5, y'all. Yeah, I just got to keep it real. We, we cooking gonna, today. We going to talk about some stuff today. Yeah, but before we get into all that drama, I'm just saying with my co-hosts and everything, we got a little shout outs we've been getting on Podcast P. My boy Ray J gave us one. Ray, Ray, J, Ray J shot us <laughs> Yeah, he gave love. a little shotty shotty. Yeah. He did it wrong, but he gave us a shout out. <laughs> Mr. One he gave Wish. Us a shout out. You know, Sports Center gave us a shout out. That was Sports dope. Center, that was mm -hmm. big. Got a little they Sports Center up. love. I've been getting a lot of love. Yeah, we've been getting some fan love. Somebody drew up a little artwork of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thanks. shout out to to uh, LOL. Uh, what the fuck, Eric? Yeah, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck, Eric? It's the it's LOL WTF. You got the actor game, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He okay. put the little actor game on cartoon. my ass. Okay. Got my little BBs on there. <laughs> All right, speaking of fans, Pat Bev's co-host, your number one fan. Mm-hmm. Rome came at you a couple of days ago, bro. <laughs> he did saying some spicy things. I mean, some of it, some of it was funny. Yeah, he some was... of it, it, it got a couple of laughs. I laughed a little bit. Yeah, the I, third I, baseman. I laughed a little bit too. You know, he came at me sideways a little bit, but I, I got to give a little context to this whole thing. He's a battle okay. rapper. Okay. Yes, either, but this isn't battle rap, Jackie. You know, I didn't say anything negatively about you. At all, all I said was that I would beat you in a one-on-one -on -one game. Facts. Oh, he said. And you said I probably would. No, I, I would beat you in the one-on-one -on -one game. And Let's get will. that clear, okay? Facts. Clear. And Facts. then this guy over here to my left, Mr. Paul George, said that <laughs> I was more handsome, fair. We both know that's true. <laughs> and he said I was more talented. <laughs> and I think that's true as well, too. Facts. But, and we all agree. All right, now that we got that off our chest. <sighs> Ooh. Feeling better. Thank you, Jesus. We, we we stand on what we said. Mm -hmm. Let's let's change gears a little bit. Jackie, it's time to check in on your picks. Oh yeah, I'm up big time, biggity biggity big big. You already know how I do. But first, shout out to Caitlin Clark from Iowa. But wait, let the people know what Prize Picks is, Dallas. So Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you pick two to six players, then pick if they will score more or less than their prize pick projection. Yep, yep. You aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. So how did you win, Jackie? Oh, you know how I did. That was, I placed an entry on Caitlin Clark and Bones Highland to score more than their projections, and they did. That's all they did. And it's not only who projections, okay? Prize pick offers projections on any sport that you watch. Tell the people how much they can win, Dallas. So you can actually win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Yep. And on top of that, all first-time users that deposit and use our promo code, PodcastP, will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. So you already know what that means, Dallas. Tell them, Jackie. You want me to tell them? Tell them. That means if you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. And you already know what I'm going to say at the end, Dallas. Cha-ching! So the producers just brought this to me. Mm -hmm. April 5th is my anniversary. Back to the game after breaking my leg. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. April 5th. It's going to be, a, I mean, I never thought about it, but like thinking about it as a date, it does have a special meaning. Of yeah. course. Because, I mean, A, we played Miami too. And right. that was like 
that's like a, that was the rivalry when I went out. You know what I mean? The year before I got hurt, we just lost to them in the, in conference finals, mm. and so we came back to Miami, April fifth, the welcome back game. Mm. Crazy moment. Had to feel good. It, it did feel good. To, did you to, go crazy? I had I had like you know thirteen and, and fifteen he was doing minutes. His thing. He you was know, doing his made thing. my first shot. That's crazy. Fuck it. That's but crazy. I, I mean I remember I remember like I was nervous as hell. I was super nervous because I I didn't feel like I was I was confident enough and trusted all the work that I put in going into that game. But like if you watch me, I still was like hobbling around. Like I was still like unsure of like. Uh. Yeah, is this, is this, <laughs> are you safe down there? <laughs> like, I had a breakaway layup. Young P would have, ha! <sighs> Young P again. But I had a breakaway layup, smoked that shit. <laughs> just because, like, I didn't have no power. Like, mm. there was no, nothing left. Like, nothing was in there. So what that said, is it tougher getting back mentally or physically getting back together after injury like that? The mental part, the mental part is the toughest part of it all. Cause like physically, you know, like physically, you know if you're good, right? Like if something don't feel right, you feel that. Like oh, this shit is my knee. Like how you 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 fucked your knee up? Like you <laughs> right, know if right, like right. oh okay, like my right. shit ain't good today. You know what I mean? Right. Let me sit down. So if your body feels good, and then now you in the game, and you like damn, like I don't. It's been a minute since I did this. Like I don't know if I can if I take the wrong hit, or if I come off the wrong way, or. Like what's gonna happen? It's so much. How what long ifs. does that last? Is it, is it a? Is it a, a long well, people don't time? know. Like people don't know. Like so, I played in April. The first game back was in April, but I was like full on practicing in like February. So that's two months mm. in between the lead up before I came back, and I look nasty. Like in my terms, I look nasty April fifth. <laughs> right. As far as my movement. Right. So think about two months before that, I was like, like I remember being in practice and like motherfuckers is blowing by me and I'm like <laughs> frustrated, like fuck. What's that? Like, because, 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 because I can't. It's gonna get better. I just like my legs weren't. It my legs. Physical. I was still figuring it out. Like okay. I was still coming into my body, like trying to trust my my body again, trying to trust my leg again. I was like playing off basically one leg just because uh. I was scared at times. And I just remember like we in practice, dudes is just blowing by me like and I'm like fuck when did you start overcoming it I think I think I just started getting more confidence as the weeks went on and then obviously the lead up to the game I was confident in it within the game from the work that I put in for that two months I was confident at that point but I, I didn't I, I wasn't like totally myself I wasn't I didn't feel I didn't feel like I think it was just adrenaline took over that game and then because it was after that game, it was kind of like a it was kind of like a dip. Right. Right. It started to get a little more sore. Like my legs started to get it, get sore. Right. I think I finished with like five or six games to play at the end of the season. But it, it did start to get a little sore. So it was definitely adrenaline that game. Yeah, I don't think people realize how difficult that in, I mean, what you've been able to do from that injury, you just don't see it a lot. Like that's not like a. It's not this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those. Band -aid uh, on this one. You're, a big, you're a big motivation. Yeah. I'll tell you oh, come that. Come on. And I think big I remember motivation. what you have like a, is it technically like a, like you have like metal in that leg now, right? Yeah, I got a rod. I got a whole rod, whole titanium rod in my right leg with two screws. I just don't think people give you like, man, that's, it's crazy. Like the dude snapped his leg in half yes. and now look what you've been able to still do. Like that doesn't happen. No, no one's done that. I don't yeah. think anyone's done that. You How do you I, feel motivating all these kids out there, Pete? Because you're a big motivation, especially to the kids, man. You know, it comes from all I knew. Like, Because you could have gave up. I could have. You could have said, fuck this. I could have. But that's just <laughs> not. That's, just saying. Hey, that's not, that's not how I was cut out. Like, uh, you know me, bro. That, that's that's where the competitiveness just takes over. And it's like, all right, I'm going to give myself the best chance, like the best chance. And then learn it from Cole, that being my guy, play through injuries, yeah. like figure it out. That's what it came down to. Just figure this shit out. Take it one day at a time. Figure it out. Pete, when that happened, I know Jackie said that he doesn't like to watch those injuries. I was showing him. I'm like, but he well, know all about all yeah, of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, he, no, no. Because I got what, good ears. 
<laughs> I got it. I got good ears. Okay, I'm like Stevie, enough. baby. Okay. <laughs> I got good ears. I can imagine how it looked, but I don't want to see it. I I I've never seen his injury. Come on, you've never seen that? Nope. When they to told me what, when they explained to me what happened to him, I said, I'm not watching that. How I long did that. it take you from when it happened? Like, how quickly did you watch that? I watched it. I watched it in the hospital while I was like. Because I, I, I had to see what happened. Yeah, I would have been curious. Pete, why? You in the hospital. You already fucked I, up. Because I've made, I made that play hundreds of times. And like, why this one time? <laughs> <laughs> you into it. Got a in, sciatic <laughs> acting up. Sciatic. Why this one time? Like, what went wrong this one time? Like, I needed to know from like my psyche. Like, because I'm, I'm, I've chased down a bunch of guys throughout my career, like I've gotten chased down blocks. So you like, wanted to just see how you landed wrong? I wanted to wrong? see how I landed, Harden. what did I do wrong? James Harden. Yeah, it was on James. So yeah, I had to watch it. Like I couldn't I had watch to it, P. I, I mean, and I, I've seen it like, <gasps> did, like see, couple years after. That shit hurting my I don't watch it right now. now, I won't watch it now. Yeah, let's, let's, we on a new topic in a minute. Your leg tingling <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, my leg's <laughs> starting to act up, man. Clearly, you have experience coming back from injury. And, you know, it's one thing when, you know, you get injured and your mom or your friends are, you know, telling you, hey, you're, you know, you're going to get better, things of that nature. It's like, hey, thanks for the support, but, you know, you really can't do anything. You've been uh, pretty vocal about speaking into other athletes' injuries and giving them encouragement. And if I was an athlete and I know, you know, you're a high-level athlete, that probably means a lot more because it's like, you know what, like – P PG did it. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how you've been able to use this example um, or your injury as uh, encouragement to these other athletes that go through something like that. Like after you get hurt as an athlete, it gets dark. Like it's dark for you. You know what I mean? Like you think about the worst. You think about all the negatives. You think about like, what did I do wrong? Like, why did this happen to me? What What did I do? Like you think about all of that. What? How? How could I have avoided this? Like. And so I just like I want to be that positive reinforcement to the athletes that go through this and want to hear the testimony from it. Like, what did I lean on? What did I rely on? Like when it happened to me, bro, it was an outreach of everyone. Like I've heard from people I didn't even know that knew me, like calling the hospital, sending messages like my phone was blowing up from people I had no idea who, like, how did you know my number? How did you get in <laughs> So it was like, it was, it was, for me, it was just like, I'm gonna be that person because I know what that did for me when I was going through that, to see people rally behind me and give their support. Like, I wanna be that for that person. Like when Dak went through that ankle injury, I immediately, yo, I'm here for you if you need anything. Bro, I, I I got your back. Like we'll get through this together. Regardless, we know each other at all. I'm here with you. We are gonna get through this shit together. Kevin Ware, when he snapped his leg in the mm -hmm. tournament, that was another brutal one. We oh. talked. You know, make sure his mental was good. And I actually reached out to uh, it was a French gymnast um, by the name Samir snapped his leg, and we sent flowers to him. I got in touch with him and, and basically you know sent my you know support. And we had a, a long conversation over Twitter where I was just kind of just keeping him, you know, in good spirits and, and remaining positive. And he got through it. Like, you know, we text years after, uh, you know, to see how well he was doing and he's back, you know, competing and stuff like that. So it's more so just being a positive reinforcement to these guys that, you know, go through these injuries because it, it's... Bro, it can be dark. Yeah, I think even Floyd came in. Didn't Floyd come and visit you at the hospital? Floyd's my Vegas. guy, yes. Shout out Floyd. Shout out Floyd, bro. Floyd is my guy. Floyd, no bullshit. Floyd was there every day. That's dope. <laughs> he pulled up on me every... And I was in the hospital for like a week, I want to say. Nobody would never even know Nobody that. ever... Bro, I saw Floyd every, every day. day. That's awesome, dude. Shout Yo, out P, to the you champ. need anything? Bro, he's bringing me soul food. <laughs> no bullshit, bro. <laughs> He'll come, come in there, chop it up with me, chop it up with my folks. That's like, dope. Like, real, like, on some, like, real humble shit. Like, love Floyd for that. Can't pull it up on me every day. No bullshit. The champ. That's the what champ. champ does. That's my guy. The money team, baby. Well, shout out to... April 5th anniversary of PG. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
All right, we're going to talk about PG's five. I know we uh, went over your top five two-way players of all time, but I want to dive into kind of the role player uh, mentality or position that is in the NBA. And I know you know this. You know, in high school, you're probably the man. You know, in college, you're probably the man. And then when you get to the NBA and you're with all the big boys, you know, not all the time are you going to be that same player. You're not going to get as many shots. Uh, they're, you're not going to get as many plays called for you. You might have to take a lesser role. So talk a little bit about the importance of being in the NBA, but also being able to accept your role within the NBA. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, that's every NBA guy's story, right? right. Like every everyone that's in the league has been a 30 point scorer or a 20 point scorer at some point in their career mm. and did it easily. Like the top guys are 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 freaks. Like <laughs> the top elite guys, the elite scores are just freaks. That is what it is. Like they have that much confidence to break out and be elite. Like it takes a lot of confidence for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the fall off is. Not to say the role players aren't confident now, like they're confident in their role now. But at some point, it's like, all right, well, I can't, like, I'm a little nervous to drive the ball. Like, so I'm just, I know what I, I can do. I can't shoot. You know what I mean? So I think that's where it comes, where role players, like, find their niche. Like, this guy can do it all. I know what my game is. I'm just going to stick to this and help him. Like, I'm going to be a, a, you know, an extension for him. Right. I think it is a rough transition, right? Because every, be. every guy, like, every, every – and it's it's crazy to see like when kids get drafted, when guys get drafted, yeah, they're elite as kids. They get in the league and like <laughs> on the G League. What you can't do years. gets found instantly. Right. You can't shoot it. All right, like we're going to sag off him. The league knows we're going to sag off him. So then now as a player you develop this new skill. Right. Like, oh, okay, I got to be a driver. I got to be a facilitator. I got to be a screener. I got to be a like and, and then if I want to play, I got to do this well, right? So now this player finds his niche, vice versa. Like, oh, force him to put the ball on the ground. He can't dribble, but he's a shooter, close out hard. He can't dribble, send him to the basket. So then now this player develops knockdown shooter. Like, and then now he just, because of over time, like he's just been a shooter. He's a, he he's a little nervous to put that ball on the ground. Like his coach been drilling him, like shoot the ball when you open, if not swing it. So now it developed in his head, like, oh, okay, I'm just a shooter. Taking his game away from Takes him. Takes his game, but he does it himself. Like, it, right, you got to right. be confident. That's why confident. The, the, the elites are the sick ones, bro. Wow. They're, they're sick enough mentally That's to you. be like, you know what? I'm going to play my way. I'm going to play my style. And, you know, if it's good, I, it's good. I'm going to build off it. If it's not, like, and those are the ones that are, you know, can't put Man. it all together. All right, P, so if you were going to make a starting five out of the role players that you've played with throughout your career, mm -hmm. who would be in your starting five of your favorite role players? Starting five favorite role players? Okay, I'm going to go at point, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with G Hill. Okay. I'm going to go with G Hill. That was my guy. Learned a lot from G. And he, he was like, the first, the first one to like, you know, when I'm feeling myself and I was the man in Indy, he was the one that kept me going. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go G Hill. At the two, I gotta go, I'm gonna go with Lance. I'm gonna go with Lance at, at my two. Lance Stevenson. I'm gonna go with Lance as my two. Like Lance. He was- He was funny. For, for, for all the reasons. Like I think when I first got to Indy, he, he made me like understand that, that we dogs now, like, I saw what he did, and it was like, I'm going to match his energy. So I'm going to go Lance as my two. I know you think he was a role player, but do you think that Lance thought he was a role player? No. <laughs> but I think that's why he was so so special. Right. <laughs> because he didn't think he was a role player. And, I mean, for what it is, like, he was our second best player on a nightly basis. Like, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with being a role player, but his role for us was like the energy, right? The 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 toughness, the shit talking, the the he swag. Did, he would do everything. He did everything. <laughs> like his role was just his role was undefined, but like 
That was that was his role. Let him be him, and he's going to turn the Pacers. You still talk up. to Lance? Yeah, I still talk to Lance. I still keep in touch with where Lance from time at? to where time. Where he at now these days? He's uh, I think he's still in Indiana. He's got a house yeah, in Indiana. You got to tell Lance come out here. And shout make out, it, shout out, Born Ready. We got to get Born on on the pod one time. That'd be dope. So you got G Hill, you got Lance. Who's three? I'm gonna go with Nico. I'm gonna go with Nico. Nico is a a hell of a glue guy. Does it all. Don't complain. Don't hear. You don't. You don't really hear from Nico too much. He won't say much. <laughs> but when it comes to being on the court and playing, like he's reliable. My four. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with my guy Mook, Marcus Morris. That's my dog. The Twizzles. I'm gonna go with Twin. Twin is toughness. He brings that edge. I like him. He does. A, he does a lot for us. My five. I'm gonna go with with the big fella Stephen Adams. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the big fella Steven Adams. That's that's my five. That's as my role player. He gonna definitely best screener. Definitely got your back. One of the best screeners I ever played with. Shout out Steven Adams. How strong is he? I've heard stories like this oh guy my is God. just like if you get hit with the screen, it's like it's your Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you get hit by Steven Adams, like you will like your bell is wrong. Literally your bell is wrong. And 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 he's like he's one of those dudes that don't lift weights. He does like like really? he he does not lift weights, bro. The Viking. He does not lift. He's just naturally strong. Big like Viking. That's like Russ too, right? Game doesn't he just do thrones. push-ups and pull like yeah, doesn't yeah, Russ yeah, just yeah. do like Russ don't do he don't Viking. lift weights. Pull-ups, push-ups. push-ups, pull I played with a couple players like that. <laughs> D West, bro, never lifted a weight, don't lift weights. Bro, I saw what? bro, I saw him doing push-ups. You said you know, D West though? D West. <laughs> I saw D West. He was you know the you know the machine that you like stand on and it vibrates. Yeah. You know that machine? Yeah, I don't really know what it does, but I don't I know. know what I never about. knew what it did either. <laughs> like, we had one in Indiana, yeah, yeah. bro. I saw D West cut the shit on doing push-ups on him. <laughs> like I don't need weights, P. I do push-ups. <laughs> I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he would like he would just do like one arm push-ups. Like he was like a fucking barbarian he was a monster. That that's more shocking to me than the Steve. Funny Adam story, movie. bro. One game with D West. Funny, funny story. <laughs> I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it with this dude, right? I forget the player, but me and him going at it. He like, P, don't worry about it. <laughs> Send him to me. So I look like. Uh oh. I looked at you. the dude. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it was like a down screen. It was like a down screen, like a play. It was like a floppy action. I could. I had a choice to come off either Roy or come off T West. So I get to the bottom, right? I'm head under the basket. I look both ways. Remember what D West said? Take off. Take off towards D West. D West. Boom! Like intentionally, elbow, lay dude out. Got the offensive foul, bro. He didn't look at the ref. He just ran down. <laughs> D West was crazy like that, bro. He was one of he D West dope. is one of my all time favorite teammates. This episode <laughs> drops on Monday, and you guys play the Lakers on Wednesday, and I want to talk about it a little bit. So, how does it feel? You know, you always hear kind of the banter between Laker fans and Clipper fans, and that the Clippers have been in the basement. I'm not saying that, but that's just that's what they're known for. You guys say you have the same gym. You guys are getting your new gym, but ain't in the basement I, no more. How does it feel? No, you're absolutely right. How does it feel to kind of play in LA for the Clippers in a predominantly Laker town? It's funny because like you do feel like you do feel like you're in Laker land. Like I remember when I first got traded it's crazy. to the Clippers. We okay. went to like we went to like Disneyland or or <laughs> where did we go? No, we went to to Universal uh, Horror Nights actually, and um, we walking around and like all they were saying was like, "Oh, PG, congrats! Like, congrats coming to LA! Like, you should be a Laker." <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, bro, what? what? <laughs> like, do you not know there's another like there's another team here, right? <laughs> and and to be honest, that was the first time I heard that. And, it, and since then, it's been like 500 other times. Like when people see me out in public, oh, what's up, Paul George? Like, ah, oh, you should be a Laker. Yeah. I'm like, why not just say like, I, like go Clippers. Like <laughs> we represent LA too, bro. Like. It's not going to feel like that until the Clippers win that championship. It's not going to feel like that. And it took me to like, 
actually be here to like realize we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> we got a lot of fucking work to do. Yeah, there's just so much history with the Lakers and you can't yeah. really, you know, only time is going to kind of help you guys. Even if you guys won this year, which I hope you do, yeah. one's not enough just because it's yeah, Laker I mean, land it, for it, so it, long. So. Y'all got to get into it. Into it. <laughs> got to get into it. And just in- like y'all got to get into the dome, <laughs> y'all got to get into it. I got to get this shit together. We this do. year, starting now, we winning our, now. Hey, we got our work. Until on. Y'all got to get into it. got our work cut out for us. Come on, Pete. But it's not like, it's like we understand, obviously I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan growing up. Like I understand the history. Of course, Clippers, we, we don't have, we can't compare in any way. Like what the Lakers what are they, all time? Yeah, their body of work. I mean, they're one of the most winning Yeah, NBA. them and the Celtics, but like all time, like they're the best. They're they're the pinnacle of it. So we understand that, like, you know what I mean? But I think we can write our own history. Like, and that was why being with the Clippers was so intriguing is because like, it's never been done. Mm-hmm. Like we can go down as like, we can start our history. You yeah. know what I mean? And that can start with me being involved or a part of that. So Into um, it. Get into it. Get we got to get into it. We got to tell the team to get into it. When y'all playing in there, y'all got to get into it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, like, I like Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> Indubitably. We got to get into it. I like that you said that, Pete, because I don't think people, you know, there's levels of competitiveness. And one thing that everyone should know about Paul is that he is ultra competitive. And I don't say that just to, you I know, I'm not that. just saying that. I said like, that in episode one. Like, but people really <laughs> got to understand, man, it doesn't matter what this guy is doing. It's just like, it, he turns stuff that's not supposed to be competitive to be competitive. So I like that you're kind of using that as like an opportunity to like, you know, there's that's your competitiveness coming out. Yeah, like, hey, I yeah, want to abs- help absolutely. somebody that hasn't done it yet. Either. So I think you guys are on your Why way. Not? Why not go down as the first? You know what I mean? Like that sounds way more interesting to say. I really hope y'all do it too, P. Just because I hope so. being your friend and you got the first championship in the end. Parade it, P? Come Ooh. on. Parade P. P. That, that goes it, back it to just, finals P. It, it, that's what I'm saying. We're going to get the finals P. We're going to get MVP P. We're going to get them all. We <laughs> got to get them P. Go parade P. Parade, There's a parade, bro. I'm yeah. going, hey, we're we gotta gonna get, be we got to get. Oh we got to get. Uh, the, we're going to the 14 down to Palmdale. <laughs> Triple P. The triple, triple deck P-P. bus all the way from L.A. to Palmdale. Oh. We doing and it. We going down 57th Street. on the float? Huh? Your podcast PB on the float? We can, do the, we can do the pod right on the top. Pod float. Come right on. on. Come on. You got to make this happen. We're going to do it. We talking about it now. We See, that's what I'm saying. Ooh. We talking about it, so we're going to make sure it be about Manifest. Come on, manifest. That's what I'm talking it's about. Come on, manifest. Jackie. It's already up. Do it. Come on. Come on. Manifest it. We not playing. Get into we, it. That happens. Get into it. <laughs> we got to win this year. This year started. It's going to be our new dynasty year. It's going to be the year where we start <laughs> everything. Oh and we're going to get all into it right away. P, he going to be healthy. The whole team going to stay healthy. We're going to have uh, 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 Lou paying attention more to, to the flashy things that's going on. <laughs> and he going to catch on and know what to do with that. So shout out to the Clippers. And uh, let's get into it. Amen. Let's get Amen. into it. You know, me, Pete, being a Laker fan and all, and you a Clipper, does them game? What you laughing at? He's <laughs> a hater. Does them games, how does them games feel to you when you have to play them games in front of everybody? I think both sides, both sides, like whether we want to admit it or not, both sides is hyped about it. Like, it, it, it's a rivalry because we both represent LA. The real Lakers fan, they go say, oh, you, it's no rival, you guys don't have, uh, all right, we get that. But in terms of like, <laughs> present day, <laughs> present day. Yeah, there's there's a present day rivalry, right? And right. we we definitely get up for those games. Like, can, can I ask this question? Like, like they really? I, of course they do. Y'all, since y'all are both there, when y'all play the same games, how does that 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 locker go? Do they really switch who's home right away or who's home? Because no, nah, I mean we like, we got our own locker room that we stay in. Oh, y'all don't. Sh- so y'all, it, it, they have two. They have a Laker and a Clipper. Yeah, yeah. We got our own locker room. I thought they switched. No, that's a good question yeah. though. But like, when it's a Laker home game, are you guys in the same locker room as when you're on a Clipper home game? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you guys it's have locker like, room. Yeah. you're not like that. That's a good question. I like. That, I never that, knew. That, so that's, I yeah, to no. know. Yeah. And we're literally like uh, the Lakers locker rooms right here, and then like maybe four doors down, our locker room is right here. Can I ask ask you one more question too? How does that work with the staff? 
Is it who's ever home? That's like they consider it like that staff work because they both L.A. teams. Like when it's the. the yeah. The I mean, well, there. so like they'll take so they take, you know, obviously they take whoever's home takes like. So we 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 both got a weight room there. Right. OK. So when we're home, that's our weight room. Lakers can't go in there. Hmm. We share the same weight room. That's crazy. But when we're home, that that's. Like in there, they like Bron's got his shit in there that, that's already in there. <laughs> like, hey, yo, what shit, up? <laughs> shit's got his logo and shit in there. Uh, but when we're home, like that's our locker room or that's our weight room and vice versa. When they're home, like we can't go in there. That's where they, you know, do their pre-workouts. And then we got our own like little, you know, room that's, you know, it's a, Never, that's it's a regular room, but we turned it into a lot or a weight room for, for that game. Well, y'all won't have to deal with that shit no more. <laughs> not, not at the what? <laughs> hey, y'all will get into it. <laughs> <laughs> we into it though. <laughs> so P, you're hooking us up with some playoff tickets, right? Nah, but I can hook you up with SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There's more than 70,000 events every day on SeatGeek, from sports to concerts and more. What makes SeatGeek better than others? They put all the tickets across the web in one place so you know you're getting the best deal. Then they rate the tickets on a scale from 1 to 10. And finally, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the events with swaps. Okay, okay. So that sounds good. But are you at least going to give us like a, a discount? You know I had to come through for my guys. Use my code PODCASTP for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code PODCASTP. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Dallas, I heard our new sponsor, AG1 by Athletic Greens has been helping you stay healthy and focused for your church hoop league. You heard right, P. I take AG1 before work every morning, and then every game I have I take a little bit before that, and it makes me feel unstoppable. So is AG1 a nutritional drink? Yes, and covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. Hey, easy peasy. Is it expensive? It costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good deal if you ask me. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash podcast P. That's athleticgreens.com backslash podcast P. Go check it out. Y'all know April 5th, the movie Air come out. Woo. Yeah, that's that movie about Michael Jordan oh, signing MJ. with Nike. Yeah, I got to see that. Got that beautiful Viola Davis playing his mama. <laughs> you got the best friends in uh-huh. there again. You got Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, and they didn't want to let it be known, but uh, Chris Tucker would even play up in it. <laughs> Chris Tucker in there? Chris Tucker back, baby. Come we on. We ain't seen him in a minute, though. <laughs> you goodness. know? But I heard I heard that uh, Michael Jordan not in it. What y'all, what y'all think about that, though? You know, what y'all watch a movie Michael Air Jordan and no in MJ? it? No MJ? No MJ. They said they got a silhouette of MJ. It's a silhouette. You see a shadow, you like. How you that make was, a movie about MJ? I don't know, but Michael Jordan. And no Michael look like ain't, ain't even a dude that be on the what, Walk of Fame. What, what? they yeah, did yeah, was no, Hollywood. Walk, they can't that, put him. They didn't in even there? get him. The jersey in LA. The Jordan jersey, yeah. <laughs> what they Big did ass was shorts on. they tuck the shoe, and every time it was a scene where Jordan's supposed to pop up, they just tuck a. Uh, the uh, the uh, 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 a flashlight from the shoe and reflected it off the wall. <laughs> well, he bought it. Yeah, that's might have what it was. It. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. I, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know how who, that would Who y'all think should have played MJ though? For real though. That that mm. the Walk of Fame dude. Yeah, that's probably the Walk of Fame dude. <laughs> like uh, we want to know who the Walk of Fame dude. What's your real <laughs> name? Yeah, yeah. I done seen you all my all my years growing up in Hollywood, <laughs> and I always see you. Never knew your name, but shout out to the dude who been playing Michael Jordan all his life, and they never played the role. He's great. They gotta have him. He, Damn. He, they should have had it. could have yeah. somebody play yeah. That's crazy. He, I bet you he tried to, he had to have. I feel like that guy wears his Michael Jordan jersey everywhere. everywhere. He's in LA fitness doing that. That jersey uh, got to be yeah. funky. It got to be. Nah, he probably, got, he probably got like, he, he probably he got like 10 of those. Like if anything, that should have been literally a Jordan mascot. Everywhere he go, Jordan should have paid this man just to go with him. That'd be crazy. So P, if they was doing a movie, about the great PG-13, the bunky. The bunky. The bunkiest. <laughs> what actor would you want to play Act- you? It's, this one easy, because he he's like my favorite actor now. 
And I gotta go with, I gotta go with Franklin. Damson, Ooh. Damson. Go with Damson? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Damson. Damson? But nah, Damson, but that's a good one. I like Damson. I, I, I like, go. I like, he's my favorite. Like, I ain't seen him on nothing else uh, but <laughs> Snowfall. Watching him Swarm. Is this new? He got Swarm. He's in there for a little bit, but he's good in it. Okay. He's good in it. I got, I'm, I'm a fan of his. Like, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll peep whatever he, you know, okay, whatever so he Damson, do. That's a good one. I gotta ask though. Y'all look like, totally different, but that's a good one. I mean, when I got the little fro, he could he could pull off the little fro. It's the height, but go ahead. The height, the but the height. camera. He could y'all do about ten feet. They can work with tall. the cameras. Yeah, okay, they can he do can that. he can uh the little the little boxes. He can stand on the little boxes and scenes. <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> but I gotta ask though. I gotta ask though because talk to me. Since I'm a fan of his and like his snowfall stuff, right? Like when y'all like when you get your own like because our our like. In basketball terms, it's our ISOs, right? And when you think about his, when he's got the snowfall and he does that scene where he's in that blue lit room. Uh, follow me if you know what scene I'm talking about. He's in that blue lit room. He just took some LCD. Oh, and he was and drugged up. He was drugged up and he's talking to himself. Mm -hmm. It was a wedding. And he does the... The him, her, her, him, bodies, bodies, right. went, went, bodies. Went that scene right there, right? Uh -huh. From from y'all, like, because for me, I'm not an actor, but I'm watching. I'm like, oh, he killed this scene. <laughs> right. Like, he killed this scene. Do y'all look at it at the same way? Like, or y'all critiquing it? Like, damn, I, I would have did that totally different. That's or, it. If you, once you go to that playback, you know you done did something good. And is that one take? Like. Well, it, 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 the way his adrenaline was, yeah. sometimes you want to do things in one take and just let them keep going. That's what I'm saying, because it's hard saying? to recreate that. Because he might if not. I, if I did, if I was starting doing that and I messed up, <laughs> that would kill my whole energy. Like, I wouldn't know how to get back. As an actor, they always tell you to stay in the moment, stay going. Yeah. Because it can be a baby on the, in, in, on the set that they shouldn't have that, say, cry. Yeah. Something on the lights could have dropped and they getting the shot. Yeah. What you gonna do? That's Stop and get scared because something fell? If if, if it hit you, it hit it you. It might you. make the scene better. Right. Not to not not to say you want something to happen, but right. you have to live and stay in the moment. So y'all going until the director says cut. That's when y'all like, all right, you I fucked go till up. You say right. cut. Okay. Now if it was something that was totally, of course, messed up, <laughs> you stop. Of okay. course. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But if it's something that was something Mediocre, just something so little. Keep it you rolling. Keep it rolling. That scene you, right there, boy, that was one of my favorite scenes. Where's he oh. from, P? Because doesn't he have I an accent too? London. Like that's what's more incredible. He has like the a accent. London accent, yeah. but he's in Snowfall. He's in LA, and Down you could Cali. not tell. Yeah, I think that's impressive. I help people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could, I could be a pretty good. Uh, hey, Franklin. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to John, shout out to the great John Singleton. He man. did. That. Did Great you watch show. the last? The, have you been up oh. to date on it? No, no, no. Oh, I've been waiting to binge watch. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Let him watch. Easy, bro. It's, it's getting good. good. Jackie. Okay, so we know who Paul would want to portray him if he was in a movie. But if you were going to be in a sports show or a basketball show, you know what athlete would you want to act for? Who would you want to be? Like what basketball player? I know I know it's gonna be one of the ball brothers, probably. Draymond but. Green. Draymond uh. Green. Just because he's he 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 got a lot going on in his life and a career. Like he's 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 fun. He's 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 a person that talks a lot. He's not afraid. Yeah. He's gonna give me a lot to work with. Yeah. He's gonna have he's gonna have uh he's gonna give you happiness, sadness, drama. He might So you like the range. I love the range. Okay. I love the range because he might do something to his own teammate, but I ain't saying nothing. But <laughs> but that's how much range that that he has. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So not to say he's a, 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 a he's a great person to, to to follow if you're a kid too. He's an NBA player just right. because some of his antics on stage, I mean on the court when I say that, is just because what he does, that's just him. It's who he is. Right. And I would be Draymond Green. Would you like go through his old routine? Because you hear stories like Jamie Foxx, who he's playing, whoever. And he just follow. like engulfs himself into that guy's like to. real life you character. You got to. You got to follow him. You got to call him every day. You got to ask him a, a gazillion thousand questions about yeah. like things. You got to listen to his voice. You got to learn his voice. You got to learn his sayings, what he say. You got to know how he is with kids. If the movie goes that far, you got to know how he is with his wife, his right. parents. Right. You, you got to actually really, spend time gotta, with him. You got to spend time. What like, pressure goes into that to get that right? Well, you know. Because you think about like Will, what Will's done yeah. with 
with Ali, with yep. the doctor, with the CTE, like all the 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 bios that he's done. Like what goes into like you I don't. gotta master this. That's a lot of pressure you, 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 to, you, to be someone else perfectly. You like in one of your biggest opportunities and your ass bed and I fail. But I mean, and it That's goes pressure. It goes both ways, and I'm not not to bring up a, a sore subject, but you know, you look at guys like the Joker, the guy, the gentleman that got so engulfed in yeah. that role, like. Yeah. That's that's like yeah, that's you get actors wild. That, you get actors that's like that sometimes. That was they, what Heath Ledger. Yeah, he, and Heath he did Ledger. amazing in that job. But the stuff that came after it, it yeah. was very sad and like yeah. a hey, little dark. Listen, but, you got to do it. Listen, the the man was amazing though. Yeah, he was. He, I mean, he he you, made that character. You got bro. some actors that's like that. Look at look at the role that Denzel had to play on Flight. Yeah, where mm-hmm. he was, he only could perform flying the plane if he was drunk. Mm-hmm. Now we know in the movie he wasn't really drunk, right? But you see, what I'm saying that's right. Wait, so you're saying while they were filming, he was actually drunk, slapping somebody? No, he he had to play the role. Correct. So he, but he wasn't actually drunk. He was just like he, the the. Oh, I thought it's a he bio. Was like, it's a bio about what yeah, really happened at no, the Hudson River. No, I understand River. that the guy. I understand. He, I know the story, but I'm saying, was he getting so no. into the role that he was like, you know what? I am going to drink and act right now. No, I don't think he did all oh, of that because okay. he's he Denzel. He don't have to do too much yeah. work to do something drunk. He done played plenty of drunk roles. But what we we're saying was <laughs> okay. he was a pilot and he couldn't fly the the plane unless he was drunk. And it was that's just dope to me. Yeah, Dallas, no, who, do, who do you think you could? Dude, here we go. Um, no. Nah, bro. <laughs> Jackie, don't start. Don't I'm start. Not, I'm not. You're gonna get I'm that not. wrong treatment I'm not. too. I'm not. While we're on the subject of like movies, like what what is Bonky, well, I'll start with you. What's your all time favorite sports movie? I can't be corny and say my movies. <laughs> I can't say her. Let's throw it out season. there. What we got? We got for a basketball movie, Hurricane Season, but I'm okay. not gonna say that's my favorite movie. I'm just gonna be honest. Okay. My favorite movie growing up, I will honestly say because I'm a big fan of Wesley Snipes, mm-hmm. I say white man can't jump. Okay. Whoa. You can't jump? Mm-hmm. Shut your hey, ass hey, up. Hey, 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 come on. He used to. Swaggy I'm D used said, to. Swaggy D. Mm-hmm. White man can't jump. It was a great movie. That's a movie. classic, it's though. A, it's a classic, a classic, you know? You got Woody Harrelson and, and Wesley Snipes teaming up. Yeah. That was dope as hell. Dope. Well, what about you? Yeah, Hoosiers is my favorite all-time movie. My dad had me watching Hoosiers when I was just, I mean, them on the road to the you state championship. And, no, 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 not blue chips. Hoosiers for sure, and then I always go with Space Jam too just because I love Space yeah. Jam. I think that, Space that was, Jam was like iconic for Wait, especially our Space generation. Jam no, I also, for sure, no. Oh. Also. Space yeah, Jam blood also. Pressure go well yeah, what a, that, Boy, you better have said Space Jam one. <laughs> no, I didn't even watch it. I, would, I didn't even watch the new Space Jam. I no? refused to do it. It's not bad. It's not for our generation, though. Like that's I'm we're not. expecting. We were uh, we were expecting something of like how it was for us, right. and it's, well, it's, it's, it's different for the kids. It's Aren't your favorite movie? It was yours. I gotta go with He Got Game. It portrayed, and for me growing up, it portrayed how or what it looked like to make it to the league. Like because it, it was very relatable. I had a girlfriend at the time by the name of. La La in high school, so That's did Jesus hilarious. Shuttleworth. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, and then I was getting recruited, like I was going through the process. I was Jesus. No, they call me Jesus. <laughs> they call me Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just it was just relatable, and I and I thought that's how it went. I thought that's how like all right, you go on recruiting trips, you have fun on the recruiting trips, you go to the school, like you put on like, and and I just thought that's just how college goes. And so I had this idea, oh, I want to go to college, like you know, playing a tournament, like I want to like you know, agents come and talk to me. I want to you know, be the guy on campus. And so it, that was like the movie for me. How do you think Ray Allen did in that movie? I thought he killed it. That was I dope. thought he killed it. I knew more, I knew Ray as, the, at that time, I knew Ray as an actor before I knew him like, oh, this dude was really nice at basketball. Like, I just thought it was just somebody that they grabbed and he was just really good. <laughs> like, oh, okay, this dude is a good good actor or a good basketball player. <laughs> Um, this guy's good. And then I found out, like, oh, he's really in the league. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was, uh, it was dope. I thought he killed it. I thought he did a great job, like acting. And Shout then it, it, it made yeah. me want to act. Like, oh, okay, shit, I could act too. How many of we got? Ray Allen, 
Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, as far as uh, people that done like movies, basketball movies uh, that I've always seen. Hernandez, what's his first name? He did the hustle. Juancho, yep, Juancho. Yep, yep. We gotta get a P. He killed it. Anthony Edwards and it killed it. We gotta get a. We gotta, good, we gotta I, get I, you I enjoyed that P. show. You gotta come out with your own movie. Your speaking of our movie. Speaking right. of Ray Allen P, do you have any good Ray Allen stories that you could share with the viewers? You gotta have something in there good about Ray. Ray Allen stories. I remember him when he was on. And it, it's just a, a good Celtic story. Okay. It was my rookie year. I wasn't playing. I think I had my uniform on, but I wasn't playing. And I'm on the bench. And you look at it, and it like, I don't know. It just looked like they were larger than they appeared. Got it. And I'm watching them, and I see Rondo. I see Ray Allen. I see Paul Pierce. Mm. I see KG. <laughs> I see Shaq. God dang. And I'm like, yo, what the? Am I really? Wa-? It, 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 didn't, it didn't hit me until I was like on the bench and I was watching this and we're getting blown out. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> My name's going to get called at some point <laughs> to check into this game. And luckily, I don't think I didn't I didn't play that game. <laughs> but uh, it was it was a play. And it's it's not Ray Allen related, but it was that game where I, I saw all of them playing. Damn. Uh, somebody threw a lob up to Shaq, and Jeff Foster was my teammate. <laughs> tried to like, I don't know if he tried to like, you know, when a lob is thrown and you look in and you try yeah. to back up to mm-hmm. go like, that's how you get caught a lot of times. That's how I broke my ankle. No, you didn't. My knee. That's how I broke <laughs> no, you, my knee. No, you didn't. Go ahead. Uh, and so Jeff Foster tries to like, you know, swat it. And Shaq just comes and like, boom, bang, like dunks on him, hard as shit. And I was just like, wow. (laughs) Welcome to the fucking league. That was like a real welcome to the league moment for me. That's dope. That's dope. All right. So, Bunky, you was a, let's talk about your your movie. You was in a sports movie. Yep. You was in uh, the the hurricane season. Let's Uh talk about the hurricane season. Talk about it. Mr. J.J. Coleman, you had a chance to work with Forrest Whitaker. Indubitably. You had some goats in there. Taraji P. Yep, yep. Uh, Isaiah Washington. Isaiah Washington. Bow Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wheezy. Yeah, yeah. Talk talk about, you got any stories of with Forrest Whitaker, anything you took away from him? Man, with Forrest. That's a goat. That dude is really a gangster. Yeah. (laughs) A gangster, like a good, like when I say a gangster, not no like, like OG, thug, he's just an OG gangster. I asked when we was on set, he was listening to some uh, on, to um, some headphones, and he listens to some music that I'm thinking is gonna be like honestly real shit. I thought it was gonna be like some Kirk Franklin, yeah, or something or whatever. <laughs> I said, Mister Whitaker, what you listening to? I want to know what type of music you be listening to. Y'all wouldn't believe what this man was listening. What do you have to. on? So I'm gonna some give you exhibit? one guess and you one guess. I, I, I'm, and it's it's this is a far like far fetched of what you think he would be from listening Forrest to. Forrest Whitaker, which you would even. He assume. has some ludicrous on. Okay, that's yours. Mm, I'm not sure about it, artist, but maybe like some country music. N.W.A. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Niggas with attitude. <laughs> and, <laughs> listen, when he told me he was listening to N.W.A., mm. he said, oh, yeah, I'm a big Q fan. I said, wow. That's, that's what crazy. You, and he was really listening to N.W.A. I can't even think, remember the song he was listening to. Yeah. But he said N.W.A. I said, that's what you listen to all the time? He said, yeah, I listen to this when I'm getting ready to do that's, something rough. That's how he gets into Yeah, his. that's how he get into his mode, I guess. And he was really listening to M- N.W.A. And it shocked the hell out of me. It made me feel <laughs> like when I had to do scenes with him, Yeah. that made me just knowing that knowledge from him, yeah. it made me more comfortable. I said, this a nigga. Right, right. This, this my nigga now. <laughs> I ain't got to be all nervous about this nigga. So that honestly made So he me, went from Mr. Whitaker, what up, Forrest? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then we was cool with, at the time, because we shot that movie in New Orleans, we was cool with Chris Paul, uh, Morris Peterson. Uh, oh, that's love. Just, just all them. So they would give us tickets to go to the game and – you wouldn't believe it. You would be like, yo, Mr. Whitaker, you want to go to the game? You would think, you know, because he Oscar-worthy winner and all. Yeah. You'd be like, no. 
He like, let's go. Yeah. Sit front right there on the on the on the, uh, on the wood and have a good time. That's dope. Have him a beer and stuff like stuff that when you work with people like when I like with, with, even with Mary J, just to get shot by her and say the things I said. You think certain people at their status that they're gonna trip? Right. Or Take offense to it. And dude. That dude was a was a, a a good blessing after that for me. That's dope. Just to know you don't have to go in there afraid all the time. Right. People right. are all human. They all natural. You had Wayne on there too. Talk about talk about that experience with now, Wayne. Was Wayne, that your first time meeting Wayne at that moment? Not my first time, but first time really like interacting with him for an amount of time. Yeah. And really dealing with him, man. It was funny because you know Wayne big smoke weed. He big do right. everything. Right. He's, he's a real gangster rapper. So right. it was just funny because I have a big personality when I'm on set. No matter if I'm doing a drama, a comedy, or whatever, I'm the same personality. Tim Story, the director of the movie, and I don't care put you out there, Tim, y'all was scared. They were scared every day to go tell Lil Way, bring your ass to set. <laughs> <laughs> like, we need you. They was just scared they was going to probably go to the trailer and get too high because it was smoke over yeah. there and they weren't going to make it back. That's probably, I don't was, know. But probably they, when he was working on Sorry for the Way. They used to call me. <laughs> every, they would call me and say, yo, Jackie, can you go to Wayne uh, uh, bus and tell him that we need him for set? <laughs> What? Why don't y'all tell the AD? <laughs> they like, oh, they're a little scared. They don't feel nervous because he, he keeps telling them that he's coming, but he's not leaving. And I don't know if he's going to come. I'm like, I got this shit. <laughs> I go to Wayne trailer. It'd be smoked. I'll get on there chilling for a little bit. I'm like, Wayne, we need you on set, dog. Yeah. He'd be like, well, what, 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 they said, why they didn't come? <laughs> I'm like, they, they were scared. They were scared. But uh, we got to go. We got to go work and knock this scene out yeah. man, before the light go out. I mean, for the, 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 the day go away and we can't get the shot. He like, that's all you had to tell me, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and bam. That's Could have did it, that's but my, that's my that idol was, right there. That's that was one of my like, legends. I actually got a chance to meet Wayne All Star Weekend, like 2012, I want to say, 2013. Hell. It was in New Orleans. I can't remember the date. Uh, the first, the first trip we was in New Orleans. A one, A one. Big Wayne fan. She's loving uh, Well, he was sick, bro. He got like he didn't get uh, the he got, I don't know if he was like food poison or like you know that 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 New Orleans food was bubbling oh, a little so bit. So he didn't get to meet his boy. He, so he didn't get to bro. He was it was so bad. He was trying to fight it. He couldn't. Uh, and so we get to the club. It was a uh, actually he did make it in there. He did make it in there. <laughs> Cause there was a bucket of ice that they, uh, you know, you keep the drinks and shit on. Oh no! A one <laughs> threw up all over the place. But Wayne was there. He got a chance to meet Wayne. Uh, I'm, that was my first time meet Wayne. Uh, it was real quick. Like I was just a little kid. Like get to meet my idol, man. We going to one of my new favorite topics of the day. It's called rated PG. I thought of that last week. <laughs> Now, if y'all don't know what rated PG is, it's when <laughs> PG takes one of, only one new young player out there who he rates highly, you know, and compares their game to a current NBA vet or whatever. So it's called rated PG. So PG, once again, give us your one. This one was an easy one for me. And I wanted to go. I, wanted, I, didn't, I didn't show no love to, like, no big man. And this dude is a sleeper. Y'all probably don't even know who this, this kid is. Ooh. Do y'all know who the youngest player in the league is the youngest, youngest player? player in the league okay not Lamelo ball does he play at all he plays yeah jason turning <laughs> <laughs> this dude to, uh, jalen duran jalen in Dur detroit Durin. big man jalen duran in detroit how old is he 19 19 for Who's real that? like his game i like i like his 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 value and i see what i think he will be in the league like I think I I see him as like a baby Dwight Howard. What position he play? You say center. The center. The center. How tall is he? It's like six eleven, six ten, six eleven. But he's like built like a grown ass man. I gotta go play with him. We this. played him. We played him, and like, you know, you you when you boxing out like big men, like you you get a feel for how strong they are. You know what I mean? Some of them, I ain't gonna lie. Some of them, I'm like, oh, this I can move him. He light, like <laughs> little as fuck. <laughs> And then some of them is like, God <laughs> damn, this dude's strong as shit. <laughs> and it fucked me up because he's only 19. 19? Yeah. Bro, I could not move him. Just a baby. I could not move him. <laughs> he he was, I'm like boxing him out. Next thing I know, he in front of me. <laughs> like, 
he just swim moved me out the way, like, and he in front of me now. So I'm like, God. And it, and it happened, like, multiple plays. I remember going to the bench, like, yo, this little dude's strong. <laughs> I, I just, I like, and I hope, because they got so many big men over there. Detroit got Wiseman. They got Marvin Bagley. They got Isaiah Stewart. Right. I just hope they don't stunt that kid's growth, because I think he's going to be a big-time player. He's 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 only 19. He's got the size. He's got good feet. What number, he can what move. number he wear? Number zero, I number think. Number zero. Too. Yeah. He got him eat all the way. Yeah. He he's good. I got to watch him. I, I haven't seen him yeah. play, and you were spot he's on. He's on Detroit. Detroit, I mean, they don't got don't TV games. Yeah, they they're, were they're spot young. on on McDaniels. He's, again, I was telling you that earlier. That People guy. look out now for Jalen Duran. So, fun fact about Jalen Duran. He is the first NBA player born after LeBron's first NBA game. Are you serious? That's, That's wild. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. That's real crazy. But you think about like Bron's play with it's the, sick. the father the son duos bro. that yeah. he's played with. Like that's old. <laughs> Been in the league for a long about time. He's about to play with his son. He's about to play with his own yeah, son. Yeah, I mean, damn. Now, what kind of shit is this? The brother <laughs> played that many, this many seasons. That, that's why he got the NBA it's career. Different. High points. It's different. Damn. But he say, yo, get pass come. the ball. <laughs> You get to son. come out of high school. <laughs> come out of high school. You didn't see me on the backdoor cut right there? <laughs> you didn't see me. Son. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, you get to. Hey, that this sick. is wild. I can't. I That's can't. That's special, though. Oh, my God. I can't. So, Jalen Duran, you just been rated PG by PG. <laughs> All right. This segment, what we like to do here is finish with the questions from the audience. Including some of the best content creators out there. LeJethro Jenkins, what you got for us? What's good, PG? Love what y'all doing. Hate the fact we didn't get to see you and Brian in Cleveland together. That shit truly breaks my heart. But anyway, here's the question. Was recently rapping with your teammate, very talented young bull Bones Highland. And he said his favorite basketball player of all time is Hot Sauce. I love Bones game. But nigga, who? Anyway, who's that for you? Who's a player we may not think of who truly inspired your game. And please don't say hot sauce, bro. Come on, man. Why he hating on the hot sauce? Why he hating on hot sizzle? Sizzle. Hot sizzle. Yo, hot sauce had a huge influence on me, bro. He had a huge influence on my game. Like, when I first started playing basketball, (laughs) I I was the tallest person, right? So the coaches, like when I first, when I, my first game, and I had like jean shorts on, like. <laughs> you wait, you, your first game you were wearing jean shorts. I was wearing shorts. jean shorts. Ugh. Jean shorts, my first basketball organized That's, game. I had jean shorts find on. That picture, please and, find that picture. And I had like a Did, oversized YMCA jersey on. Okay, I think, okay, okay, okay yeah, I can see it now. Hanging off the shorts too. It, it, I did. I did. <laughs> Little cut off. And it was. It was. It was just my dad, bro. My dad just like, yo, you got a game. What? <laughs> you got a game today. What? <laughs> so he just drove me like I was playing with my friends and literally just we just dipped and went to the game and played. So I had jeans short. I'd have they just throw me a jersey. <laughs> because I was taller than everybody, they originally just stuck me in the paint like you're you're our center. And I'm like, No, I'm not. Like <laughs> this is not what I do. Like and I was embarrassed by it. So and at this time, and one is taken off. You know what I mean? Like and one is doing his thing. Like you hot sauce. So I'm like, bro, I gotta work on my handles. Like, how do I get from away from the basket and get the play on the perimeter? And I was a kid thinking this. So I used to stay up and watch the and one mixtape, bro. I used to watch all the volumes, watching hot sauce. Like I go to the garage, I watch an episode, I go to the garage and I just start working on my handles. I'm putting cones on the ground, I'm putting chairs, I'm dribbling around them barefoot. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm just out there. Before cartoons came on, I'm in the in the garage working on my handles. And I'm watching, I'm watching Hot Sauce, all his shit. So Hot Sauce, dev, like that's a sleeper. You gotta be a basketball heady to know who Hot, Hot Sauce, Sauce is. is. Yeah. Hey, have you seen the I think it was a Netflix documentary, but I think it was called The Rise and Fall of An One. I ever, saw that. It was how good was it? It was super the good. The marketing with the tapes, like that that those guys it were deep. It was it, deeper than what I uh, I thought. It was I, did, I didn't know none of that behind the scenes stuff for N one. It was crazy, deep. crazy, crazy. Story. So go back on like who like other than because that's a sleeper, right? 
who's a <laughs> sleeper? Because my sleeper player that influenced me in the league, I don't know if people know who Josh Howard is. Josh, Josh Howard? I know who Josh Howard Light-skinned Josh Howard. Played Atlanta for the Mavs, used to have the headbands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yeah, wristbands. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy bounce. Crazy bounce. He had a handle, mid-range game. He was like my sleeper, like outside of watching Kobe, outside of watching T-Mac. He was like the next player that I used to idolize growing up because he was a big wing. He could do everything. He could guard. You know what I mean? He was He was tough. I used to watch him closely. That's dope. Y'all have somebody Josh like Howard. outside of the stars? Mm, I mean, if we're talking about Anne one, I got to shout out Grayson, the professor. The professor. Bro, I was of course like, the well, professor. This is, bro, look at this. Yeah. So I, I've always been a big When fan. he made it, I was like, all right. What? At first, I was like, all right, they just letting anybody make it. <laughs> he's pretty He's pretty good. I've actually then, played with yeah. him at the church league. He, he actually knows basketball, and he didn't start off doing all that kind of stuff. He was actually just like a hooper. So yeah. I, I think people need to give him a little bit more. He, he can play basketball. but After up. after why I was like, oh, he, he can really Jackie, hoop. He would. <laughs> Sick with no, I was like, he can really hoop. Like, Shut and up. he was making shots. Like, everybody, he's not athletic, crazy to, like, dunk and stuff like that. So – he would do his shit and then he'll, huh, Jimmy. I'm like, okay, he can, <laughs> he can that, hoop. That whole team, A-O. A-O. A-O was nice. Going A-O, off, bro. Oh. Oh. A-O was one of, wow. sick with it. Who was the buff guy that was Nina. the dunker? Oh, helicopter. <laughs> helicopter. The helicopter. <laughs> Didn't they used to have a video game? The main event. Yeah. Video game. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Escalade. They did. I think they, they said Escalade. The video game. The Escalade. I could Le- go Le- on Le- and Le- on. Throw? It was fun. You guys were hating on them and one players, one. boy. Hey, and one. You talking about like, look at it. You got I all these greats talking about them. Good I guarantee play. the and one had a lot to do with the influence on the NBA. Well, who, ain't Drake Drake messing with uh, with sick with it right now, ain't he? Nah, he with uh, uh, Bone he's Collector. Bone, bone Collector, Shout I'm sorry. Bone yeah. Shout, Shout out, out Bone, bone Collector from bone Pasadena. Dope. Yep. Yep. He from the Dina? From the Dina. Bro, he still hoops too. He still is Still cool. wearing a wave cap too. He's wild, he's bro. Still I don't weak. even know if Bone Collector got braids up under his head. He's <laughs> always wearing a wave cap. I don't know. It's he should a have a wave cap endorsement by now. They shouldn't even have Bow Wow with the endorsement. <laughs> you better be <laughs> careful. Be bone collector. <laughs> he might be. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, he gonna come for you. It's, bone it's, is it's my gonna family. be Rone. Now it's Bone Collector. I'm telling collector. Bone that he just. I, he should have a, a Bone Collector. Hey, he, I'm trying to get him some money. I'm, I'm pretty sure he about? does. He he got a line. He got a line. See, skip to my loose. Shout out to Fresno State. Oh, great. skip to my loose. Oh, played in the league too, though. Too did yeah, he? Yeah. He was the first yeah. NBA so, player to do Fresno it. Fresno State, baby. I didn't know he went to Fresno the first State. NBA yeah, he went to Fresno player. State. Yep. Okay. Played in the NBA Finals. That's right. No, Telfair wasn't a uh, wasn't one, huh? Sebastian. Nah, nah. Sebastian. Okay. He just a New York. It was just, just a New York, York legend. Okay. Okay. I knew it. Wrap it up, P. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got a few more questions. These ones are from the audience. The first question comes from at DMV Francisco. And the question is, cats or dogs? And if so, who takes care of the pet? I ain't doing no damn cat. Nah. I ain't yeah. doing I'm dogs allergic. all day. You allergic to cats? Allergic to cats. Can't I'm, do it. I'm dogs all day. I do a dog before a cat. Yep. I got three little ones. I'm taking care of the dog. That's why we don't have a dog now, because I, I can't. Play in the league, travel. That dog will be traumatized when I get home. Is it cats, you got, cats you ain't got to take care of. They take care of themselves, but they just too sneaky for me. They too sneaky. You yeah. don't even know you got a cat. Yeah, you hit me sneak, <laughs> sneak up on your ass. You know. Hey, what you doing? Damn. You see how I'm doing the PG podcast? P? Just looking at they you, just, too. Meow. Yeah, they sneaky as hell. It's dogs all the way. Shout out Ghost and Kanan. Those are my two little pocket bullies. Yeah. Big, big dog fans. So big dog fans. The next question is from at Carrie. Do you have a hidden talent that we as fans may not know about? Uh, hidden talent? I got, I got a lot. Here we go. One of them I'm good at. Okay. I'm good at, I'm good at handstands. Oh, uh, okay. That's that's actually Long time to do it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell them, <laughs> but that that's that would be. I'm true. I'm pretty legit at like handstands. I think that's a. But you got a time a, a certain record time record. What I mean, I can I can like. I can I can hold one and then I can walk. Like yeah, he does like the CrossFit. Like the, the question I just asked you, how long? <laughs> hey, he, no, I'm don't do that. I can. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Come on, don't do that. We can't be doing that. I can go. Dang, bro. I can do. I can oh, hold a handstand. Probably like, probably like no no 
no BS, like 30 seconds, 30, 30 35. Seconds. Okay, you kept it on it. What about yeah, you, Jackie? Keep it on. Any hidden talents? I'm trying to think of mine, so I'm, I'm shooting it back over to you. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done it. I've done it at home. I've done it with my kids. I've yeah. done it. I've done it drunk. In, hey, you uh, remember Mykonos when we were? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we was doing the uh, kick ups. We were seeing who could do like so you know upside do down like push ups. You know how to things. like you know how like the ninjas. I don't even know who does this. You know when like you you're on your back and you like kick up. Mm-hmm. It's basically you push off your hands and you kick up onto your feet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he saw me do it and they were stunned. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, how did Can't you believe know you could do it? Because you're so tall. Because I'm so tall. They like, yo, dude. He like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> so he tries, that, he tries it. He tries. Almost broke his spinal cord. Bro, it was- <laughs> almost concussed himself. <laughs> bro, like he, he, like I he, tried. look, bro. He, <laughs> he, went back he tried, head. bro. He kicked up. And his head went and back. Head. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we were feeling good, though. So I didn't we were feel feeling like, good. Yeah, he didn't we, feel we it. We were doing a lot. He we slept longer than he usually does. I don't know if that has something to do with it. What, what about bro. you, Jackie? Any hidden talents? What I can you draw. You can draw? You can draw? I can draw. I can draw and paint. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're Oh, and, and another one. You make some good ass pies. I can cook. I can cook my ass off. I can make anything. Tell about your pies. My pie, my uh, sweet potato pie. Grandma taught me how to do that. You know, got the recipe before every she passed given. along. And uh, sweet potato pies, I get it every year. I make them, and everybody want them. We selling them. We yep. selling them podcast yep. piece. Sweet potato pie. I make a, <laughs> I make them every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. Yep. I make them every. It'd be funny. I'll be seeing this dude uh, Facetime Thanksgiving or the, the like day before Thanksgiving. This <laughs> nigga got like eight pans. <laughs> What the fuck you making all these pies for? <laughs> I'm dropping them off, P. I'm dropping them off. People put their orders in. He the hood. Yeah, they he got the hood legend, man. I'm going to bring you one this year. I'm going to bring you Brent, one this please, year. Please, bless us with one. I'm going to bring you one this year. Bless us with I'm one. Bring Leave you a one signature uh, JL and, and whipped cream on. You, you ain't got to worry about it. Leave a signature on it. Listen, I put my, I'm old school. I put mine up in there. After you, you have made everything, when it's time to eat it, you put that but, that uh, butter on it. Yeah. Put that, that, that microwave. Yeah. And then put that whipped cream on or it. Or sign, the, uh, go sign the pan. Sign the pan. You. Sign the pan before, I got before you. you bake on it. So when we finish it. Like See, that was a Jackie. Y'all know how to cook? That was a Jackie pie. Y'all know how to cook? I'm a Traeger 100%, so I like to throw everything on the Traeger. I, I can make uh, some top ramen. Yeah. Okay, we ain't cooking nothing. Y'all got to learn how to cook, though, just in case, man. You got to learn how to cook one day. I can cook enough got to survive. To. Look, look. <laughs> okay, <bro. laughs> I'll survive. To survive. Okay, I'll, say no more. It might not be the. It might not be the best, but I'll survive. Say no more, cause you gotta give your kids. Small menu. You gotta have your kids. You <laughs> kids one day gotta gotta be like, Dad, give me that favorite meal that you that you make, and they gotta ask you for it. They you love when I make it. top ramen. Uh, okay, so you just warm it in the boil. Okay, just <laughs> <laughs> warm it in the boil. All righty then. <laughs> well, y'all, it's been great. That is a wrap for episode five. I want to shout out my co-host Jackie Long and Dallas Rutherford. And shout y'all out for rocking with us. Playing with us, man. And reminder, new episodes drop every Monday. Make sure you go subscribe to our YouTube and turn on those post notifications. And also, make sure you follow us across all the social media channels at Podcast P Show. Jackie, any last words, bro? Yes, man. Listen, I hope you and Ron get y'all ordeal situated. You know what I'm saying? Good episode today, fellas. Really good episode. Good one. To all the people out there that's leaving us comments, keep doing them because they really help us out on our podcast. So keep doing that. We really appreciate y'all. And just get ready to tune in for Monday for this episode. Bing, bing. Bing, bing. Bing, bing.